Pull requests are everywhere in open source software. But just because they are widely adopted, it doesn't mean they are the best fit for your team. In fact, they might be slowing your team down and even harming your code quality. Here's why. If your team is like most others that use pull requests, then your setup probably looks like this. Development happens on a feature or a topic branch. A pull request gets created when the feature or the story is finished. Pull requests often include multiple commits. Finalizing a pull request triggers automated verification like builds and tests. Then a teammate is expected to approve it through manual code review. The review might involve some discussion, feedback and requests for rework. Integration of changes into mainline only happens once the pull request is finally approved. This process might sound like a good approach to ensure quality, but it has some serious drawbacks. Let's start with probably the most obvious one, longer feedback cycles. Because integration only happens after the branch is merged, feedback from the build pipeline is delayed. Feedback that tells you whether your changes actually work when integrated with all other changes. That delay also affects feedback from your product owner or users. While tests can confirm that you built the system right, only they can confirm whether you built the right system. And finally your team's feedback on your design gets delayed too. If a reviewer finds out late that your approach is going into wrong direction, major rework might be required. The later that feedback comes in, the bigger the rework effort. And the harder it will be for the team to accept that part of the work might be wasted and that unplanned effort is required. The bigger that effort, the higher the psychological resistance to actually doing the rework. It becomes tempting to approve the pull request as is, which leads to technical debt and so lowers overall code quality. Have you experienced that kind of tension in your own projects? I have, multiple times. Pull requests bundle up many changes into one batch of work. Bigger features naturally involve multiple changes. But even small stories come with several commits if you are working incrementally, especially when refactoring is treated as an integral part of feature development. As Ken Beck once said, for each desired change, make the change easy, then make the easy change. The bigger the batch of changes, the more code is integrated at once. Bigger changes cause more complex merges. And when a large pull request breaks the build, it's harder to figure out which part actually caused the issue. Reviewing a pull request that includes more than one logical change takes more time. It also increases the cognitive load on the reviewer because it's harder to keep everything in one's head. This lowers the quality of the feedback and increases the risk of superficial reviews, which ultimately results in a higher risk of introducing technical debt or even bugs. Pull requests give the impression of control. They seem to create a gate that ensures only good code makes it into the mainline. But from my perspective, that control is mostly an illusion. Establishing gated submissions is often just a workaround for deeper problems in the team, like a lack of trust, a lack of confidence, or the lack of one of the most important engineering skills, the ability to break up large changes into a series of smaller increments. Branches don't solve these problems, they hide them, and they can prevent teams from developing the maturity needed to improve. In a commercial environment, gatekeeping doesn't really block changes the way it might in open source. The customer has paid for the feature. They expect delivery. That change will be merged. All such a gate can do is to demand rework, which delays integration. That delays other feedback and increases the batch size even further. Some developers argue that feature branches help them to work in isolation. And yes, it can feel productive to work without interfering with others. But that's local optimization. It might help one person to focus, but it doesn't help the team as a whole. Software development isn't a solo sport. It's a team activity, and the team can only move as fast as the slowest merge. Every open feature branch represents work in progress. If a pull request isn't approved immediately, it becomes work in progress as well. While waiting for approval, the author starts new work, which adds even more work in progress. The more work in progress a project carries, the more uncertainty and risk it accumulates. The remaining effort for resolving merge conflicts and rework becomes hard to predict. Unnecessary work in progress blocks flow and slows down the delivery of value. To reduce work in progress and improve flow, we would need to review pull requests almost immediately. But that introduces a different problem, context switching. Approving pull requests means doing manual code reviews. That causes context switches. The reviewer has to pause their current work, shift focus into someone else's code and then return to their own task afterwards. That's two context switches. And for the author it's no better. Since reviews often don't happen right away, the author moves on to new work. 
But if the reviewer request changes, the author must switch back, reloading context from hours or even a day ago. In the book People Wear, Productive Projects and Teams, they estimate a single context switch costs about 15 minutes. Newer research indicates it may take even longer. You could reduce context switching by batching pull requests or submitting fewer of them. But as we have already discussed, that only makes batch sizes larger and delays feedback even more. As mentioned earlier, refactoring isn't something we do occasionally to pay back technical debt. It should be a regular part of feature development. But the overhead of pull requests discourages refactoring, especially when the changes aren't local and span multiple files or affect public APIs. Skipping refactoring means not paying back technical debt or even introducing new debt. And that means rising complexity, slower delivery and more effort for every new feature. So yes, branches and pull requests can even harm code quality. Have you ever experienced that a refactoring was skipped because of the overhead of a pull request? I have seen it happen. Ok, so long lived feature branches are evil. But breaking the main line is still a risk, right? So then we simply use short lived feature branches, correct? Yes, shorter is better. Less delay, smaller batches and simpler merges. But the overhead of the pull request doesn't go away. Gated reviews still cause context switches. Delayed feedback and batching are only reduced, not eliminated. And even if a branch lives only a day, it might still bundle 10 or more changes into one pull request. Now here's the tricky part. How do I keep working on my story while I'm waiting for the pull request to be reviewed and merged? I can't keep pushing to the same branch without affecting the original pull request. So I have to branch off my feature branch and create a new one on top of it, which doesn't make development easier. And that's why, at least in my experience, feature branches tend to live longer, not shorter. What's your experience? Do you measure the lifetime of feature branches? What's their average age? So if pull requests come with all these problems, why are they so widely used in open source? Because in the world of open source software, they make perfect sense. They lower the barrier for anyone to contribute. Pull requests allow maintainers to review incoming code on their own schedule, leaving comments, requesting change or simply rejecting the submission altogether. They act as a gate that lets an untrusted contributor pass through the review of a trusted committer. But commercial teams are different. We work together every day. We trust each other. We know each other's strengths and weaknesses. So ask yourself, does your team really need a process that assumes you're strangers? Just because something works well in one context doesn't mean it's the best choice in another. Alright, so if pull requests aren't optimal for your team's productivity, what's the alternative? That's the topic of the next video, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it. In the meantime, check out these videos. They cover techniques that are essential if you want to move beyond pull requests.